One accountant I was dealing with recently, they're mainly in the business-to-business -business field, so they're dealing with their clients regularly, but they had a couple of email templates that weren't personalized with reminders for their clients about things. And I said, hey, you know, if I'm Yurik Leon of Terrific Trading and I've been a cl client of yours for years, I, I don't want a dear sir or madam start to my email, thank you very much. Oh, God, are we doing that? We hadn't even noticed. Yeah. You know, it was just the template hadn't been, hadn't been checked. So these little things can happen. Um, the subject line, such a big one. Does the subject line always reflect the content of the email? Now, you will have your clients get back to you about something totally different. You've maybe sent them something. Maybe it's your newsletter, and they get back to you about something completely different. The subject line doesn't tell you that, but when you respond to them, make sure that all your team has the subject line relevant to what the discussion's about. Otherwise, things get lost in, in inboxes. So simple little things uh, that make a difference. Telephone performance standards were mentioned earlier. Speed of response. Do we have a performance standard for that? And that doesn't mean we need to announce to customers that we will respond to everything within one working day or two hours or whatever it is. But internally, we need to get it right. We need to know what we want to promise our customers, but don't promise it to them until we can deliver it 99% of the time. Processes for internal communications. How are customers talked about internally? We can say all this nice customer service -y stuff, but if it's, ah, oh, you know what so-and-so said when I was out there, and if we talk about our customers like they're idiots, while we switch and experienced members of our team switch back to the right mode, it's the inexperienced ones that get this customers are idiots uh, uh, mindset. One of the things that um, I spring on uh, uh, people, particularly I've been doing it in the, the tourism and retail sectors, uh, I ask them, uh, tell them they've got two minutes in groups to come up with uh, the 10 stupidest things that customers ask. And, oh, they're into it, you know. And then you'll get the occasional person who says, I don't think customers ask stupid questions. Oh, but what about this? You know, I was up in Carnarvon, and it was how long's the one-mile jetty, you know. Um, up in Exmouth, someone said, oh, I had someone asking what time is the four o'clock bus? And there was this lady from the library there, and I thought it was so good. She said, I don't think it's a stupid question. It's just how they've said it. Because when they come from the campsite, you've got a walk of at least 10 minutes off into the closest bus stop. So maybe they actually want to know from the time they need to leave their campsite. So just clarify the question. Ah, right, yeah. So there's no such thing as a stupid question.